as is appropriate to a journalism school, is really a great story. Um, as many of you know, Joseph Pulitzer, a good sampling of whose descendants are here in this room tonight, and welcome, uh, came to this country as a paid mercenary soldier in the Union Army in the Civil War. He was a penniless kid from Hungary. He rose to the very pinnacle of American society. He was one of the three or four people who really invented the media business as a business, and he did that by uh, inventing a way to do journalism that was incredibly commercially successful, lively, and lived on believing in the capabilities of ordinary people, just like this library. Um, Joseph Pulitzer had the idea for the Journalism School and the Pulitzer Prizes, uh, which we will be announced on Monday, by the way. Um, he came to Columbia in 1892 and said, I want you to start a school to train journalists. This is a man with no formal education in a great university. Uh, and to start a program of prizes for distinguished journalists. Columbia said in its wisdom, what are you nuts? And sent him away. But he was very persistent, and after 11 years, he was finally able to persuade Columbia to accept his gift of $2 million, which was real money back then. Um, about five minutes after the gift was announced, controversy broke out, and that's been part of our life ever since, as people uh, have debated lustily whether journalists need formal education, whether journalism, what journalism should be, and so on. And it's a great part of the school that you can be assured that whenever, wherever, uh, somebody is having an argument about journalism, uh, which is a process that will never end, we're going to be involved in that argument. Um, it's a vital part of our mission. Um, now, uh, among the many things we've done to celebrate the centennial, one of the best is a book that many of you have seen. We actually did two versions. We started with one called 50 Great Stories. We're ending with one called 100 Great Stories. This is work by our graduates over the 100 years that we've existed. And you're backsliding. I'm almost done. So, the reason we did this book is uh, we wanted to demonstrate something that's very simple but very impressive about this school, and that is ever since we started, ever since we graduated class in 1913, every time there's a major story in the world, some Columbia journalism graduate is among the leading people covering that story. That's been true for 100 years. That will continue to be true for the next 100 years. It's, um, it's very hard to really capture um, how this feels if you're at the school, although many of you who are alumni and students feel it. So I'll just end by telling you a brief story. You know, I've been at this school for 10 years, so by now I've taught a lot of people. And I tell you, the single greatest pleasure of this job to me is every day I, by surprise, pleasant surprise, read an article, uh, at least one, by somebody I've taught somewhere. And it just brings home over and over and over again uh, the tremendous reach and impact of this school. Every summer, I take a sort of busman's holiday uh, and do a New Yorker assignment, and I almost always find when I'm off covering something, somebody comes up to me and says, Dean Lemon, what are you doing here? Uh, that happened, for example, at the Plan Alto, the presidential palace in Brazil a couple summers ago. Um, today, and I'll end with this, I woke up, I opened my email, there was an email from one of my former students saying he's been offered one of the very top jobs in journalism in India, and here, what should he say about the following negotiating points? I then opened the Wall Street Journal and saw a story by another former student of mine, Jennifer Maloney, who covers the New York Public Library, um, and uh, about the tearing down of the Museum of Folk Art. I was with alumni all day, as many of you know, in a school board meeting. I came home to hang out for a couple hours before coming here. 
uh, I opened my email. There was a really long, impressive story in Neiman Reports, uh, co-authored by John Wiggy, another of my former students, about um, kind of the future of journalism. I went down and got the mail. Scientific American Mind came, and there was a fascinating story by another one of my students, Erica Rex, uh, on the use of psychedelic drugs and cancer treatment. Now, I'm saying that, that's just literally, I'm not making this up, that's the last few hours of my life, just me and the students I've taught, and you multiply that by the net experience of everybody who teaches at this school, everybody who's been at this school. This school is a family, it's a beacon, it's a preserver of everything that's precious and important about journalism in a crucial time for our profession when we have great challenges and great opportunities. And our strong voice is essential. I'm so proud that we've been here for 100 years and I'm so confident that we'll be here in another 100 years. So thanks very, very much.